Hello everyone. Welcome to conversation series from IATA WCS Dubai. I am Rajoshi Chatterjee from Static Times and with me I have Simon Watson, founder and CEO of Aerios. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you too. Welcome, you. welcome to conversation series. Thank you. And uh, how is life? How, how is Air Cargo? What is the most exciting thing about Air Cargo? Uh, I think the most exciting thing about Air Cargo is that it's such opportunity um, for uh, progression in terms of from a digitalization perspective. I think it's, uh, you know, air cargo or the logistics market is probably one of the last multi-billion dollar markets that still hasn't sort of gone through its digital age or starting its digital development, but it's still at that early stages. So I think for me, that's the most ex exciting uh, prospect about working in the air cargo market. Great. And I think uh, digitalization is the buzzword everywhere in all the air cargo yep. events that we visit. Yes, it's always top of every sort of executive or board level, um, you know, priorities for the air or the air ahead, along with the likes of sustainability. Um, but it's really good to see it, you know, staying the topic of agenda, at least for the last sort of eight, nine years, as long as I can remember. Uh, it's, you know, it, it's now there and it's always features in every sort of panel discussion. So it's always good to see that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And uh, as uh, so on your website, you mention it as uh, Aerios as the first to market solution offering a unified platform for charter management. Mm -hmm. So what made you start this company and uh, what were the significant pain points that you witnessed? Sure. A really good question. So um, sort of the thought process behind this business and our sort of vision um, really was a lot of research and conversations with airlines. Um, and I think what we sort of started to learn was that um, whilst I'd say over the last eight years, um, the air freight market has gone through a rapid amount of digitalization through, you know, all of the very well known uh, air freight marketplaces and systems out there. And um, the sort of more niche end of the market, the charter market um, had been sort of left in the shadow, as it were. So for a cargo airline, that did a mixture of um, air freight and charter. Uh, there was the starting to be a great selection um, and option of uh, air freight tools. But for charter, um, it was sort of a DIY, do it yourself, piece together a few different systems to cover sort of the use case or common issues. Um, and I thought, well, uh, there's a good opportunity there um, to bring in a system uh, that effectively can replace multiple different spreadsheets and different disconnected systems. Um, and really, I think from an, you know, we, we have software for the airlines and carriers, um, but we also have software for uh, brokerages and the charter professional side of the industry. Um, and I think the common issues that we're trying to tackle on the airline side is around efficiency. So um, we've seen because of those disconnected, uh, disparate systems and the manual processes, um, there's a high level of inefficiency. So for a cargo airline, you want to focus on conversion and sales and managing requests. Um, but if you're doing that in an inefficient manner, it's very hard to grow uh, to scale right. uh, in a cost efficient uh, manner. So um, what we've um, been focusing on is increasing that efficiency for the carriers. Um, and then there's also sort of an unlocked uh, revenue potential, uh, which is around capacity and availability. So we're really now starting to focus on uh, more recently, we've got the efficiency gains starting to come through with some of our launch partners. Um, and now we're now focusing forward on the revenue gains, that, uh, the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is the game now, breaking down these silos because we have the data, but it's yeah. all in silos. Exactly. And the charter market is um, relationship based. So the air freight market is um, quite a commoditized high frequency, you know, with a, a sort of a smaller value per shipment. Charter is uh, less frequent, but higher value. And because of that, the relationships and communication between customers and airlines are crucial. So the market hugely relies on emails as its key form of yeah. uh, you know, transfer of data yeah. in conversation. Yeah. So all that data is locked away in conversations and emails. And that's what our tools sort of uh, coming in, you know, integrations with Outlook, et cetera, um, start to uh, be able to pull and track that data. So our first problem was let's digitize the process so we have access to data. And then now we're starting to get access to data. We're now working out the opportunities that come of that as a result. Yeah. So I'll just add a follow up question to that. Uh, with digitalization and mm. data, there's also a concern about data privacy. Correct, yeah. And how do you address that? That is a very good question. Um, and literally just today was 
I've had that conversation in a couple of meetings. Um, so for us, uh, data protection, privacy, we, the way we built our business. So we are uh, about a year or so old, but we are sort of enterprise ready. So our customers have enterprise level expectations. Yeah. So we are a SaaS business that are com we're conforming to um, enterprise level um, sort of data security protocols. So as a business um, from the ground up, uh, we're working towards getting our SOC 2 ISO accreditations uh, in place because um, we know that's going to be an you know, expectation from our customers, uh, especially around the advent of the use of uh, artificial intelligence in our products. Yeah. Um, that has also now become part of you know the key co topics yeah. as part of a KYC yeah, yeah. procurement process. So I think you know the the um, conversation is really around the confidential data around commercial data um, and what data we have access to to as a business, um, a what, a what uh, data is solely managed uh, by the airline. So, you know, we at the moment, we're a system, SaaS system based in the cloud on the AWS, but we are also based on our customers' requirements, exploring how you know, local hosting options and sort of, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a really important point. It comes in hand, hand in hand. Um, I think that a lot of experiences will learn through the advent of technology in the passenger market, yeah. the advent of Amadeus, et cetera, and all those really well-known tools. Um, I think everyone jumped on the bandwagon um, and then found on later on the consequences of not covering off data privacy and security. So yeah, that is a very good question. Right, and uh, you just mentioned artificial intelligence. So what is the percentage of your processes are automated and uh, how do you use AI basically? Good question. So at the moment, in our production environment for customers, zero. So we don't have any AI that's implemented into our tool right now. Mm -hmm. We have probably about 20 to 30 different use cases, however, that's come a result. Um, so we're still a young business. Um, what we're trying to focus on is implementing artificial intelligence in a way that is not a marketing plot. We're not gonna use it for marketing and we try not to use it just on on our brochures and things um, as a marketing, but we're trying to implement AI uh, where it has the biggest impact. So for us, um, you know, the best example I could have um, is because all of the data is held in um, conversation, um, training a model uh, to be able to summarize those conversations um, for our users. Mm. Um, so our users want to have access to reporting data. So we're looking at, well, could they not just ask the, the system a question? Oh, you know, what is, you know, if it's looking at a specific, if they're looking at a trend on conversion rates on lanes yeah. for specific customers, could they not ask the, uh, ask the system that question and we can come back with a detailed summarized report for that specific uh, question that they're asking? Um, rather than just looking at a, you know, what every other sort of uh, business does and just generate a reporting dashboard or something simple like that. So yeah, it's uh, summarizing of data is, um, and the other, other good use case would be um, the removal of repetitive actions and tasks. So uh, if you have, uh, if you get a request from a customer and you always build out the exact same routing, the exact same cost structure, it's probably something we could start to look at um, adding some level of automation. So automatic quote building and things like that. Yeah. So you're still uh, keeping away AI from the main business, sort of. Yeah. So we are. Um, it will be introduced, mm -hmm. but we are going to be tactical about how we introduce it um, so that it has the maximum benefit for our users. Obviously, it's relatively technically easy to you know, hook up into the likes of a model like GBT, uh, and then you know, we can start saying we're an AI-enabled business. I think the way I'd like our business to move forward is we'll start to implement it in very strategic, tactical ways uh, than just sort of using it as a blanket uh, use case. Great. And you have already partnered with a quite a range of industry stakeholders like CargoJet uh, and GTA Air. Mm. And considering if we consider these two players, these are two different types of operators. Very different. Yeah. And Very different. So one is catering to the regional market and one is for the international. Yes. And how do you think uh, your company is helping them and how are you catering their unique needs? Sure. So. The, the strategic reason as to why we went for a wide body carrier and a narrow body carrier. So um, 
we are sort of a SaaS first business. So we wanted to make sure that we built a product that was scalable for the entire global charter market, not just a product that works for domestic carriers, uh, narrow bodies, and not just a product that works for wide body carriers. Um, so we really have stress tested it. So the wide body carriers, um, generally the quotation process is a little bit simpler um, in the sense in which the smaller carriers, when they provide a quotation to their customer, Sometimes the aircraft has to be in the air in an hour's time. Um, and it's, you know, every second counts for the smaller shipments. And so we thought, well, if the system could work in a very time critical environment where we are competing, so our system has to compete against a piece of paper and a pen and someone's calculator sometimes, yeah. which actually can be very, very fast. Yeah. Um, but when you write that down, you send it off to the customer, no data is captured. So um, we built our system so that it works up to, yeah, 66% faster than your traditional methods uh, for the likes of GTA Air. Um, so now they're able to get the quote back to their customers first. Um, and in this market, if you get your quote back to the customer first, you have a much higher chance of that charter being confirmed, yeah. resulting in revenue. Um, we stress tested it with a smaller airline like GTA Air. Um, we've also stress tested in the volume of requests that cargo jet deal with. Um, so we know that it works for a high volume carrier. We know it works in a super time critical environment. Um, so we're now confident that we can move forward um, catering for the whole carrier sort of uh, market. Yeah. Um, so there's two very different use cases, but a lot of learning was done um, over the last sort of six months with both of those partners, but it's been a fantastic um, experience. Both the teams have been amazing, uh, really supportive, um, and we've been continually developing it every week. So yeah. I'll come to the learning spot. Uh, <laughs> and as you mentioned, so you work with Cargo Jet and GTA in the Alpha program also. So what did you learn from there and that you implicated and the feedbacks that were taken? What change did happen? Good question. So biggest learnings I would say was that um, the charter market is around communication. Um, and uh, we built a system um, with the, you know, the expectation uh, that people would log into our system and go to that system every time they want to do a quotation. So in effect, the users will come to us, come to our system to do the quotes. Um, what we've learned is to the biggest increases in efficiency we've found is when we actually go to the customer and go where the customer is working. So the customer is working, they're on the phone, they're in Outlook, they're in an email client. Um, we've learned that we've tried to, we've learned, uh, I guess in summary, that we need to go to where the customer is, is working day to day where they're used to working. So that's why we have um, the Outlook add-in um, works alongside their current workflow. We also have the mobile application as well. When they're on the go, they have access to the exact same data. Um, and then I think more generically, just from a product side, you have your expectations when you go to market um, and then how the users actually use the product. Um, yeah, a lot of learnings, a lot of learnings. But, you know, I, I would say that testament to the product um, from sort of the first implementation with the airlines, they sort of adopted it very quickly. Um, and I guess it's around confidence as well. So we're changing customer behavior. Um, we're moving them from uh, a spreadsheet or a very old legacy pricing system um, to this new system that does everything, which is great, but also is an apprehension to adopting that, especially when you're rolling it out to a wider team. So once we could show that time and time again, the quotations were as accurate as they previously were, but faster um, at any time of the evening or night, you know, some of these guys are working two or three o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, once we got that confidence over the line, it, it, the uptake was uh, very quick. Yeah, you just mentioned accuracy and I'm, I'm going to pick up from oh. that. So how is Aereos different from other existing tools in the market, uh, like uh, a flight planner? And how, how do you ensure that real-time accuracy is there? Sure, so um, our system is different um, in the sense, so our, our closest competitors are, um, you know, the likes of off-the-shelf tools like Salesforce or sales CRM type systems. Um, we differentiate ourselves because we are singularly focused on the cargo charter market. Um, so our depth of understanding and knowledge is very different. Also some other commonly used tools have be previously been used for the likes of passenger charter or um, for air freight tools. The, if you talk to anyone in the charter market, 
And I will always say the chart market is very, very different. It's a different niche subset of the market um, with its own problems and issues and dynamics. Um, so I think we've got a much greater depth of understanding as a business. Um, and we also have a lot of flexibility on our tool. We've demonstrated that with the wide body, narrow body carrier uh, launch partners. Um, and we have a lot of integrations as well. So um, we do integrate with flight planning systems to support, mm -hmm. fuel, uh, to support flight calculations. We're also actively at the moment looking at the fuel um, so we can pull fuel uh, burn as well. Um, and then coming into the future, the integrations with large uh, scheduling systems as well uh, around capacity and availability. So um, yeah, I think I would say it's the depth of knowledge and understanding of our business. So talking about the next phase of uh, Arios' development, uh, what's expected and how do you think that is going to impact aviation sustainability? Very good question. So sustainability is the other key topic. Um, so for us for this year, um, obviously we've and I made a few announcements um, in the last two months. We've got a few more announcements we'll be making coming up um, with uh, software partner technology partners as well with aviation software providers um, and a few more carriers. Um, our focus now as well, we have the product uh, which is in trial for brokerages um, and the, the de demand side of the market. So we have that now in trial with a number of brokerages uh, across Europe and North America, getting their feedback on the product. Um, and at some point, potentially in the second half of this year, looking to commercialize that product and roll it out officially with hopefully some announcements there to come. Um, and then once we hit that uh, point, we're then, we're then catering for both sides of the market, the supply and the demand side of the market. Um, then comes the availability piece. So that's where we want to connect the two sides of the market to share availability and capacity data, um, which links onto your sustainability point. Yeah. So um, airlines, uh, when you book a charter, uh, by its very nature, you're operating ad hoc flight outside of your scheduled program. And as a result of that, very commonly, there's a depositioning flight mm. um, as a result of that. So we want to look around how we can optimize that um, and potentially instead of an empty aircraft, we can sort of, uh, optimize the use so instead of flying empty we're at least flying it with something on board um, yeah. superb superb so uh, we are looking ahead uh, to Arius's development and uh, a more an industry which is more data efficient mm -hmm. there is more data privacy and uh, there are no silos and yep. a sustainable aviation future yeah the future is hopefully greener uh, via a bit of digital efficiency there. Yeah. Di data and digitiz uh, data digitization and I think sustainability go hand in hand. Perfect. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank Lovely you, Sam. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time. Thank you. So